How's it going everyone? Today we're going to be having a look, by popular demand, at responsive design in After Effects. God, the exposure is really all over the place. I'm right by a window, clouds are going by, it's going crazy. But you know what? Doesn't matter. We're here to learn. So the reason that you are probably watching this is that up until now, when you've had an animation that you need to retime, so you've got some keyframes in there, but you need to just rejig it and you don't want to have to drag all the keyframes around, what you might instinctively do is take your clip, split it, and then drag it out so that you can just try and get as much of the non-animation time as possible stretched out or shortened without having to compromise the actual animation parts. To make a bit better sense of that, I'll show you in this composition. Here I have some keyframes of these items popping up on screen. And then essentially there's nothing happening for this whole duration until the very end where everything animates out again. Now this is a 10 second animation, but what if I only have five seconds? What if I don't have time for 10 seconds on there? Well, that's where responsive design would come in because you'll be shifting the timing of it without actually changing the timing of those individual animations. So that start and that stop, or even maybe something in the middle if you had something in the middle. So let's go ahead and set this up for responsive design. So what we're gonna do is come to the very beginning of the comp and we're just gonna hit a marker using the little asterisk symbol or multiply. Now make sure that you don't have any layers selected because if you have a layer selected, you'll set a marker on the layer, which doesn't help us you need the marker to appear on the comp, which appears up here on this gray dud line. Now let's play this through and see, okay, where does it stop rotating? Probably around, yeah, let's just say four. Four is a good mark. So we will double click this marker. And right here you have responsive design time protected region. That is exactly what we want. So we're gonna tick that. And we know that the duration for this is four seconds of protected time because we measured it. So duration four seconds. Bam, there we go, that is a nice protected region. Nothing in there will change now if we remap the timing of that layer. So then let's go ahead and do it for the end as well. Well, for the end, we know that it's gonna go from the first keyframe in the, like, that we come across, the first event keyframe. So again, let's hit a marker, double click on it, and we don't know exactly how many frames it is from here to the very end, so instead of just counting through and Wasting time doing that, just hit protected region and it will create a one second protected region by default. Then just hold shift and click that set, that right hand node and just drag it along until you reach the very end of your comp. Okay, looking pretty good. So the next step is to actually nest that whole composition into another composition. So what you're gonna do is come up to your project panel, select your composition and drag it down to this composition, new composition icon. That will create a new composition based on all of the same settings as your original composition and just nest it within there. And what you see here is comp one, which is our original composition. And here you have your protected regions. And now what you can do is shorten this, or if you go control or command K and increase the length of this composition, the nest, you can also lengthen it and it will not affect the animations that are in that protected region. Lovely stuff. So let's say I did need this to be, I don't know, let's go for six seconds instead of 10. Well, now it animates up, does its little rotation, and then it animates out again. Now you can see there, there's a little bit of a twitch because I think the expression that I used for the rotation is actually still allowing it to rotate bouncing a little bit longer than I should have let it rotate for. So it means that it goes beyond that four second limit and then it just speeds up the rotation because we've sped it up by 40%. But nonetheless, those animation times are maintained. Now the thing about these protected regions is they have a sort of double smartness to them because you know, like this, standard use, they'll protect the timing of your animations within those ranges that you set. But when you actually reach beyond what it can handle, what it can accommodate, it will then scale down the speed of those animations in relation to each other based on the master speed of that layer. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. So you can see that the gap between those two protected regions is one frame, and now the protected regions are scaling down accordingly proportionally, there's the word I was looking for. They're scaling down proportionally. So if I just wanted to make that two seconds, 
well, you would get this, which is essentially the same as speeding up your original clip, but removing that entire gap in the middle. And then if you drag it back out, it remembers that zone. It remembers those protected zones. And so that middle part will stretch back out again. So this is incredibly useful because it's very rare that you'll find yourself in a situation where you don't have to alter the timing of an animation, either by your request or a client's request, where you don't have to change keyframes around and move keyframes around and just potentially risk adding a lot of time to your work um, just, just by having to move some keyframes. And if you've got hundreds of layers in a composition or hundreds of pre-comps in, pre in a composition that all have layers in them, hang on, I'm getting fuzzled now. Yeah, if you have loads of pre-comps in a composition that all have layers that have keyframes on them and you have to shift stuff around, that's a pain in the ass. So by using these protected regions and this responsive design for remapping stuff, for retiming, stretching stuff, you're going to save yourself an absolute ton of time and also an absolute ton of headaches because the second you start playing with pre-comp keyframe relations that, that kind of depend on each other, there's a lot that can go wrong and it's very easy for stuff to go wrong that way. So this way you just have to set your markers and click and drag. It's that simple. Now there is a process for doing this in Premiere Pro as well, but the problem is it's only for graphics that are created in Premiere Pro. So motion graphic templates that you take from After Effects into Premiere Pro don't work. Um, just imported video files don't work. It's really just stuff that's keyframed directly within Premiere Pro on graphics that are created within Premiere Pro, which is of less interest to me because I create pretty much all my graphics in After Effects because it's just so much easier. But do let me know in the comments if you'd like to know how to do this in Premiere Pro. I'd be delighted to make another tutorial which will run you through that. It's really simple. Okay, thank you for watching. Give this a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.